Hello, everyone. Hello. Can you all hear me? All right. So anyways, uh, my name is uh, Yong from Science Center Singapore. I'm a master science educator. I usually actually operate uh, the live platform show at our Omni Theatre. But the thing is, right, with these recent days, you have this coronavirus, so people actually can't visit us, okay? And uh, Omni Theatre is closed, of course. And if you like to see the night sky at the observatory, it is closed as well. So what to do? So we have decided the, the next best thing is for us to simulate the night sky, okay, using what we have over here. Uh, what's going to happen is that uh, we have actually shown you the next best thing, which is this uh, program over here called the Stellarium. So by the way, right, so if you'd like to, it is a free software which you can download and it can actually simulate the night sky. So I've actually turned the sky to how it should look like tonight at around 8 p.m. right now. So you can see, wow, there's a lot of stars in the sky, isn't it? And the thing is, before we actually do anything, let me show you something very important. When you do astronomy, one very important details is the direction which you are looking at. So down below, can you all see my mouse? Now this shows the cardinal directions. So over here, this is the west where the sun will usually set down at night. Here's the northwest, north, northeast. So we are looking generally in the western and northwestern direction. And you can see right over here, a very, very bright looking star-like object. Now, if you go out, right, and if the sky is really clear, you see this object. So what's going to happen is I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. Now, this is actually the brightest object that we can see in the night sky right now. So I'm going to kind of center it, and I'm going to zoom in with my mouse view, and let's see what that is. Oh, it looks quite different, isn't it? You thought it might be a shiny, bright object, but what is that? Well, this is, a, of course, a planet, okay? This is the planet Venus. In Chinese, it's called Jing Xing. And think about planets. Unlike stars, they don't really, you know, shine with their own light. They only reflect the light from the sun. And because Venus is much closer to the sun than Earth, for us to actually see the reflection of it at night, we can only usually see what we call a phase of it. So right now, we can only see like a crescent part of it, isn't it? So that is Venus. And you should be able to see tonight if the sky is clear. So I'm going to zoom out from Venus right now. And the difference between planets and stars is stars almost appear as a bright spot of light. It doesn't appear to twinkle like the rest of the stars as well. So that is Venus, okay? Try to look up for it tonight. Now, if you look up uh, slightly above, just imagine tilting your head upwards. We're going to look at our first constellation right over here. Now, this one is a pretty interesting one. I'm going to center it and zoom in a little bit closer. Now, it might be a bit harder to see, okay, because stars... You know, it's hard to differentiate one star from the other. Perhaps one is a slightly different color or maybe the other one is brighter or, you know, things like that. But there's not much to go by. So people in the past, what they do is they draw lines between the stars to form particular shapes and pattern. And this group of stars we're looking at right now, this constellation is called the Orion the Hunter. Now, you might have heard of that before. It's highly distinctive, actually, because of the three stars right over here called Orion's Belt that forms a straight line. Now, even before I was, you know, interested or familiar with uh, astronomy, I've always been kind of noticed them around, actually. Now, Orion the Hunter has a very interesting uh, group of stars down right over here. Now, in the stories, right, is, uh, this is the belt. Here is his uh, legs over here. And that is his shoulder, Betelgeuse, and Bellatrix over here. Now, somewhere between his legs right over here, you know, this is weird-looking thing. Now, that lies somewhere within what we call the sword of Orion, okay? So I'm going to zoom in right over here at the tip of the sword. Whoa, what's that? What is this weird-looking thing over here, you might say? Well, this is uh, merely a uh, Orion's nebula. Now, what is a nebula, you might say? It's like a giant gas cloud, okay? A hydrogen gas cloud lying around 24 light years across. It's very big, okay, light years. So what is a nebula and what is its significance? Well, this is place, right, where newborn stars are actually formed. So you might say that nebula is place, uh, is the nursery for newborn stars. So if you look right over here at this cluster of stars within Orion's nebula, now, these are very newly formed stars, okay, and still clustered together. And it probably take millions or billions of years for these stars to eventually kind of disperse out into space. So it's pretty cool, isn't it? Newborn stars. Right now, we're still focused on the nebula, the Orion's nebula over here. Like I say, this is the place where newborn stars are actually formed. Okay, so uh, now from here, let us zoom in out a little bit later because what's going to happen is that 
our colleague Li Fei, right, she's going to actually use a live casting of a telescope to look at some of the things that we'll be seeing later using the live okay images later all right so i'm going to zoom out so hopefully if the sky is clear we might look at orion's nebula so the next thing we're looking at remember this is still looking at orion now below over here at orion's lake do you see that what is this called rigel okay like nigel but rigel now you can see that this star over here is a very bluish colored star isn't it so you say okay Mr. Yong, that's a very, very hot star. And you'll be correct, actually. A star, we can tell how hot it is by observing its color. Bluish colored star tends to be a bit hotter, and while yellowish and reddish colored star tends to be slightly cooler. But very importantly, if you look right over here at Rigel, how many stars can you see? Just one, right? By natural fact, Rigel is a double star. It's a binary star system. So within that dot of light over there are actually two stars. So hopefully we might be able to look at that later. Okay, now that is Orion's lake. Now the next part is over here at Orion's shoulder. Betelgeuse, okay, right over here. So what colored star is this? It's a yellowish colored star, isn't it? So it is a red giant star. Now, you might not know this, but in December 2019, Betelgeuse, uh, Betelgeuse right, the, the luminosity, the brightness actually decreased. So some scientists at that time believed that uh, it was about to go supernova. But you know what's interesting? Because this star is around 700 light years away from Earth. So that happened 700 years ago, okay? And we'll know, we won't know about it, whether it's gone supernova, until we wait for quite a long while. But uh, recently, uh, the brightness has actually increased, so it probably will not go supernova. Now, it'll be interesting, isn't it, to see a star go supernova? Okay, so that is all right. Now, since in the story, Orion, right, the constellation is known as a hunter. So what does a hunter do, actually? Anybody knows? What does a hunter really do? Well, chases after animal, doesn't he? So if you follow the belt of Orion forward, you see this straight line, the belt of Orion. It points in a straight line down over here to this uh, very bright yellowish colored star. Do you see that? Now, this star is known as Aldebaran, and it's sometimes known as the eye of the bull. That's right, this is the constellation of Taurus the bull. In Singapore, unfortunately, we probably will not be able to see the whole other stars over here. However, Elder Varan will be very, very bright indeed. And you can see it's a yellowish colored star. Now, if you follow it forward again, you can also see that Elder Varan, Venus over here. So, you know, you can actually use a Orion to find interesting things around you. If you follow the belt of Orion backwards, over here, you see that? Oh, what is that star? It's Sirius. Yes, I'm very, very serious about that. Now, Sirius is sometimes called the dog star as well because it is part of this constellation called Canis Major, the big dog. Ah, now Sirius is about eight light years away from Earth, by the way. So it is quite close to us. Now the next star, if you look upwards, right over here is Procyon. It is part of the constellation of Canis Minor. But Procyon is not that interesting to look at because, you know, it just forms a Canis Minor with this other star over here. So that's not easy to spot out for. All right, so we have talked a lot about Orion and some of the constellations associated with it, isn't it? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to speed time for it to around the uh, books around uh, perhaps a uh, nine, okay? Ooh, let's move this to the side over here. Around nine or 10, okay, 10 p.m. over here. Now around 10 p.m., we're gonna look towards the east over here. Ah, look over here, what's this? Well, it's a little bit later right now, so the moon has actually risen. So right now at 10 p.m., Venus is not the brightest object. This one, the moon is the bright object. So if that's, I'm very quickly going to zoom in towards the moon. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful, isn't it? Now, just like Venus, the moon is a, yeah, kind of a, shows only a particular face. But what if you see the whole face of the moon? What do we call it? Well, it's called a full moon, isn't it? So right now we are almost got the full moon, but you can see at the top of it, there's a bit of a shadow over here. So this is a, perhaps a, more like a gibbous moon. All right, zooming away.
But do you know that the moon used to be part of Earth? Yeah, that's right. Billions of years ago, scientists believe a very large kind of like planetoid smash into Earth and bits and pieces of Earth was thrown out into space to eventually orbit around Earth. Now, these uh, debris eventually pull itself together due to the forces of gravity to form itself into our moon. That was billions of years ago, by the way. So I'll zoom a little bit further away from the moon. Now, remember, we're looking at the eastern part of the sky. Now, a little bit more. Now, anyone can still see Orion right over here. See that? Now, Orion has almost sank down into the western part of the sky, isn't it? So I'm going to speed time even more, actually, by another hour, perhaps around the 11 p.m. So at 11 p.m., you can see, oh, what happened? Orion has almost gone down, okay, right over here. And I'm going to slowly speed up time until it's finally gone down. Okay, bye-bye, Orion. Maybe see you again, okay? Well, the next day. Because as Orion finally sinks down in the western part of the sky, a new group of stars comes up around midnight, right over here. Now I'm going to zoom in to one of the brightest stars within that constellation, right over here. So what is the name of that star? It's called Antares, okay? And it's called the Heart of the Scorpion. Now, this is the constellation of Scorpius. You can see that's a tail over here. That's a stinger. Now, of course, in the stories, in the stories, Scorpius is the arch nemesis of Orion. They fight each other all the time. So uh, the Greek gods decide to throw them into the heaven on the opposite end so they can never actually kind of meet again. So whenever you see Orion, you will never see Scorpius. And whenever you see Scorpius in the sky, you will never see Orion as well. So... Yeah, technically, they are on opposite side of the sky. Now, the thing is, right, on the right-hand side of Scorpius, right over here, there's a very significant constellation right over here. Now, see that? Now, the thing is, right, most of this constellation around is really not visible, but there are a few stars within here which is super bright, right over here, for example. Now, this one you can see is called Rigel Centaurus or Alpha Centauri. Now, I'm going to kind of zoom in first to center it and zoom in a little bit closer. Now, do you remember just now we talked about Rigel, that star with a two double star thing over there we talk about? Yes, Rigel Cantorus is a similar situation, but rather than having just two stars, there is three stars over here. So yeah, we have a triple star system over here. It's a trinary star system. And as I zoom out again, there's the Southern Cross right over here. Do you see that? Now, of course, the Southern Cross is a constellation only visible to people living in the Southern Hemisphere, let's say in Brazil, Australia, New Zealand. And in Singapore, sometimes you can see it as well. And you can see it looks kind of like a cross, doesn't it? And right here, it points towards the South Pole or the Southern Hemisphere, right over here. Do you see that? Yeah. So that's a very interesting way to navigate, isn't it? If you can spot for the Southern Cross. But the Southern Cross is not the only constellation that points to a specific cardinal direction. Because right now, we have another constellation that does the very same thing. Right here in the north. By the way, anybody knows what I'm talking about? So let's uh, remove the constellations, Ooh, the constellation labels and the constellation line as well as we look towards the north. I'm going to use... a. Uh, my, how to say, the mouse to point out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, these seven stars is what we call an asterism or like a sub constellation that points towards the north. Right over here is the Big Dipper. And the Big Dipper specifically points towards the north star right in the northern part of the world right here. You see that? So in Chinese, of course, the, the Big Dipper is called Bei Dou Qi Xing. And the Irish thing, it looks a little bit like a wagon. Others think it looks kind of like a coffin. So different uh, cultures can actually see different things when they look at the constellations. But uh, the most important uh, association is that uh, the Big Dipper is part of the constellation called Ursa Major or the Big Bad. You see that? And you kind of see the tail of the bear over here. That's the lake over there. But uh, that's just one way to depict it. And of course, the North Star over here ooh, is actually part of the constellation called Ursa Minor. Now, of course, in Singapore, because we are such an urbanized environment, so many trees and buildings, it's hard for us to see uh, the North Pole or Polaris as it's sometimes known. So 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit by removing the hemisphere, uh, the horizon over here. And there it is. That is Polaris situated directly in the North Pole. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, let's add on the horizon again. It's not usually how we will see it. So let's remove the images, the constellation art as well. All right. So that is a little bit about the constellations in the night sky and how to navigate by them as well. So obviously, that's not the only constellation that we can see tonight. There's quite a lot of it. So once again, let's look towards uh, we have Sirius once again. And you can see that Sirius, when it's around midnight, is kind of low on the horizon as well. And down over here, we have a uh, Rigel Pentaurus. Oh, yes, uh, tonight, I believe, right, uh, Li Fei is very interested in looking for a very specific uh, kind of a cluster of stars. It's called the Beehive Cluster. So let me try to look out for it, okay, because I'm not very good at looking for this uh, deep sky object, Beehive. So I'm going to search for it, and let's see where it is. Oh, right over here, are you sure? Well, this is a, a weird-looking thing, isn't it? Well, this is uh, what we call, this is Cancer the Crab, okay? You see this line over here? Perhaps let's uh, draw out the picture so we can become more familiar with it. Does it look like a crab? Well, like I've said, when you look at the constellations, you do require a little bit of imagination. Okay, we're going to zoom in a little bit closer to this uh, beehive cluster over here. You see that? So, like uh, many of these star clusters, they were formed in a nebula as well. And it takes a long time, okay, for this newly born stars to actually eventually distribute themselves through our, you know, Milky Way galaxy. So, yeah, pretty cool looking. Now, hopefully, hopefully tonight, right, if the sky is clear, we can actually look at this uh, deep sky object as well. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out slightly. Now, where else should we go, okay? Oh, you know what, boys and girls, let's turn on all the, the colors, the labels, the art over here, and let's turn off the round images so we can actually see all the stars up here. Now, how many constellations do you think there are in the night sky? A hundred? A thousand? Well, there's actually around 88 constellations that we can see in the night sky. By any one time, we usually only see around half of them, so around 40 plus constellations at one time. So after I've removed you know, the artificial horizon, we can safely navigate around going to look at all the constellations in the night sky. So usually this is an opportunity that's only afforded if you have a planetary system or if you are looking at it through Stellarium. So you can see there's a sun over there and looks cool. Right? Oh, look at that. What is this? We've got a few planets as well. So tonight, right? Well, if you had wait up really, really, really late to around 2, 3 a.m., look towards the east, okay? Somewhere around Sagittarius, you see a few planets over there. Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. They are technically almost in conjunction, which means they almost line up together as well. So uh, anybody who would like to have a look at some of these planets over here? Yeah, sure. Why don't we have a look at Saturn? So let's click on Saturn. And I'm going to slowly zoom in. So of course, Saturn is uh, one of the, what we call a ringed planet, isn't it? So you can see that's a very nice ring around it. Hmm. Ah, I've just learned how to remove this mark over here. So this is the ring planet Saturn. Now, Saturn is a, what we call a gas planet. So I'm sure you have heard of something called like a gas planet, isn't it? Hmm? Betelgeuse. All right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit further away. Now, that is a gas planet as well. So, uh, for example, all the gas planets like Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune, they actually form from uh, the lightest elements in the universe called hydrogen gas. A little bit of helium and methane and all these things. So I'm going to zoom out further away. Now, I'm going to return back towards our own space and time. Remove the, turn on the artificial horizon and the art as well and the constellation lines. So we return back to Betelgeuse. Yes. All right, I think that the sky is pretty clear tonight, isn't it? All right, so if that's right, I'm going to pass the, what we have, right, the live telecast.
to Li Fei with her telescope over there. And I uh, hope to see you all very soon, okay? All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you all soon.
So, but before we finish, right, let's, uh, let me give a shout out to uh, the young astronomers from the Singapore Young Scientists. So if you know anybody who's interested in astronomy, do, you know, let them join the Singapore Young Scientists. And, you know, there's a lot of different science things that they can actually learn. Young astronomers, you know, young botanists and all these things as well. And of course, la, with that, right, we have to, all good things have to come to an end. So uh, the thing is, right, we have another live uh, vodcast actually sometimes around the 17th of April. It's called Living in Space, okay? That's around 4.30 p.m. So do stay tuned for that. And uh, once again, right, let, let me introduce myself. My name is a uh, young science educator from the, the Science Center Singapore. All right, so yeah, stay home, stay safe, and look, keep looking up. All right, bye-bye. Is this still on?